So I'm mean, right here addressing V. So classes A, B, C, also D. Is D a valid IP address? Question. Is D, class D, a valid IP address range or not? It is multicast range. So we cannot assign any address ranging between 224 to 239 to any of the devices, to any of the device. Now, you remember when we were talking about class A, the range was between 1 to 126. And class B, was 128 to 191. So there is a number in between 127 is left. What is that? 127 dot any number starting from 000 to 127.255.255.255. Dot dot these range of address we have for a purpose. What purpose? A self-diagnostic test. What is self-diagnostic test? The devices to test itself whether it can be a part of a network or not. <clears throat> See, if I'm not able to go online, if, I'm, if you're not going online, there may be a problem in two places. One, the problem may be in your laptop. The problem may be outside your laptop. It can be either inside or outside. How do you know the problem is not inside? How do you know that the drivers for your network interface card is properly installed. How do we know that our devices have got proper softwares to support networking? We use this address and ping and see. For example, when I say command prompt, ping, let me try to make the font size a little bigger for you size hmm. can I make the form size like that yeah when I ping 127 or any number I'm saying 100 200 one for 45. See, I'm getting reply. Who is replying this? There is no device in the network with this IP address. Then who is responding? If I call some name, there should be someone with a name. Only then I'll get a res response. <laughs> If I call a name, hi Richard, and if Richard is not there, I will not get reply. Now, if I am getting reply, which means someone is responding to this address, not only to this address, you see, I'll say 211.234. For this also, someone is responding. Anything you start with 127. Ping 127.1101. For this also someone is responding. So who is that replying me? It is the drivers. 
the operating system and the driver on my computer. So my computer, my computer is able, my computer is able to respond. The device is ready to respond when I ping to this address, which means my device is capable of doing networking. If I go, if I don't get reply like this, then the problem is with our laptop. The problem is in your computer. The problem is we have maybe a driver not properly installed. Maybe the network card is not properly uh, attached to the motherboard. Some loose connection. In short, if I need to say technically, if I get reply, my OSA layers are working fine. If I don't get reply, the problem is with the OSA reference model, meaning the layer two driver is not properly installed. So, any address you start with 127, your, your operating system will do this diagnostic test. It will check the seven layers. If all the seven layers are fine, you get a reply. Otherwise, the problem is with your device. So, you may ask a question. 127.1.1.1, is this not enough to test? Why do you have these many bits? Like two to the power of 24 bits. My God, it will be a very big lakhs of millions of IP address. Do we need to have this millions of IP address for this one single purpose? Answer is not necessary. But in the beginning, they did not realize this, that they are wasting it. They have read this mistake, giving the entire 127 for the single small purpose. So it is actually a waste. Only one address is enough. But they have wasted. Secondly, in class B, there is an address called, <coughs> okay, this is what called as a <coughs> loopback address. Sorry. This is the name given to this address. Loopback address. This is the name given to this address. Loop back address. Anything starting with 127 is loop back address. But the purpose is same. Even though you got millions of address, the purpose is same. Next is, we have an address called APIPA. APIPA stands for Automatic Private. See, Automatic Private Internet Protocol address automatic privacy AP IP 
easy to remember see ip means what internet protocol internet protocol address you know now all that you need to understand is automatic private what does it mean it means this is not a public ip address it's a private address this address cannot be seen in the internet this address will not be used in the internet it's a private what are the other things you learn from this name it's automatic you need not you, you no need to assign this address you no need to assign this address this address will get assigned dynamically are we speaking about dhcp no we are not speaking about dhcp see dhcp is dynamic host configuration protocol dhcp assigns ip address dynamically provided we have a dhcp server but here there is no need for any dhcp server even without a dhcp server an address gets assigned and that address we call as a peep address that address will start with to so it's 169 Two five four, any number. This can be any number. One six nine two five four. If you find an address, so this is this is falling in between. This two. It is falling in between these two. If you find any address between this range. If it is one six nine two five four, then they are not valid IP address. This address is not an address that you use for communication. Usually, address is for communication, right? But why is this address needed if it is not going to be used for communication? So as the word says it's a private address it is automatically assigned for the ip to use internet protocol to use but we will not be using this address to ping then what for this address our at what circumstances this address is dynamically generated and assigned for that answer is when you have a dhcp client configured on your device let me repeat see here is a switch and there is a dhcp server what is the purpose of dhcp server can you tell me yeah it provides ip address for all the clients that are configured with dhcp auto address configuration meaning when you configure the router sorry the, the pcs can be also router when we configure the pcs to get ip address automatically it means we are waiting for dhcp to provide ip address See, for example in my computer in my computer 
If I right click and show you IPv4 properties, you see, obtain IP address automatically. This means what? I'm making my computer as a DHCP client. If I click, if I click this and provide an IP address, if I click that one and provide an IP address, then it is not a DHCP client. We are manually configuring it. But when you have this one clicked, obtain IP address automatically, it means it's a DHCP client. It is a DHCP client. So these three are DHCP client, and you got a server. For some reason, the server is off. Maybe the wire cut, or uh, there is a power cut, or DHCP is not on some reason. It's not, it is not ready to provide IP address. The DHCP server is not ready to provide IP address in such scenario. Automatically this operating system here, it may be a Windows or a Linux or whatever the operating system may be. They will generate an address automatically. Something like this. But the first two number will be 169254, always. You know, the clients generate an IP address. This is to tell the user that the DHCP that you asked me to get IP address from is, is not providing IP address. That's the meaning of this address. This is just to convey the user that the DHCP server is not providing address. So operating system dynamically generates and, and informs you. That is why it is called as automatic. And it is private. It, it, we will, will not be using that address to route packets. So this is a PIP address. This is dynamically generated just to tell the, the owner of the computer that the address is not coming. The address is not coming. DHCP is not providing. It is, it is searching for DHCP server. The client is searching, but the search timed out. It is trying to discover the DHCP server. The client is trying to discover the DHCP server. The client is trying to discover the DHCP server, but the client couldn't find any response. There's no offer coming from any DHCP server. There is no offer coming from a DHCP server. So after waiting a long time, the client generate this address just to tell you and me 169254, meaning DHCP server is missing. That's all the meaning of this address. Long back, I called on customer care. On those days, you know, internet was not this uh, advanced. I called the ISP saying there is no internet in my computer. And the technician said, sir, click on start button. 
I said I clicked. Do you see CMD? No. Can you type CMD in the run? I said, okay, I'll type. I go to the run. Make it clean the start, start menu. I saw the run. In Windows, uh, I think it was Windows XP. Operating system on those days. I typed run. Sorry, CMD. The command prompt came. And then he asked me to type ipconfig. I said ipconfig. When I typed ipconfig, here I see 169. He asked me, what IP address you see? I said 169.254.10.10. Then he said, sir, you are getting an IP address. So our path is over. Our job is to give your computer an IP address from our DSCB server. Our path is over. The problem is not with the Linksys router. The problem may be with the ISP who provides the internet, or there may be a problem somewhere else. It's not our, it is not in our Linksys box. It was a Linksys router which was providing me the IP address. Actually, the problem was in the Linksys router. He thought that 169.254 is also an IP address. The technician. When I read 169.254, I know very well that DHCP is not providing IP address and the Linksys router is, uh, is not providing. So instead of asking me to check the Linksys page for DHCP, configuration he simply is laziness he do not want to troubleshoot the DHCP issue in his Linksys box at last how I solved the problem is I upgraded the operating system of the Lynx, Linksys switch and I was able to fix it myself so if you will find an address 169.254, don't believe it's not an address. It is simply telling you that DSCP is unreachable. Please ask me a question. What happened? No questions? Okay. Let us now, let's now focus on this IP addressing. Let's continue to do that. We have two different address types, means two different schema. Some are called as private address, some are called as public address. Why do we need private address and why do we need public address? Private addresses are private. They are within the organization. One, RFC 1918, 1918 is telling what it is telling that there are a set of address that you no need to buy you can freely use within an organization you can have your own private network if I have 1000 computers for all those 1000 computers to communicate you no need to pay anything it's free between the devices in your organization, 
we use private address to communicate. So IA and A need not to share 1000 IP address with you. All that they need to do is just one IP address. See, we have a router in the edge. It'll have only one IP address given by the ISP, a public IP address. All the other devices inside our organization will be running with a private network. All this will be running in private. Only when they want to go to internet, up to here they go with private IP address and from here they get translated to public IP address. We call it as network address translation. They get translated to public IP address, private to public, that is private to public. network address translation. We'll talk about this later. So what I'm coming to say is instead of giving 1000 computer, 1000 IP address, we have only one IP address for those 1000 computers. So we are able to save a lot of IP address. That is how we are managing with a 32 bit address for the entire world. The last class, I gave a big explanation of how we are managing with 32-bit address to support the big internet. 32 bits, the entire network is surviving. It is all because we got private networks, many, millions, and all they are translated to one or two address of public. In that way we save a lot of address. So that's the purpose of RFC 1918. It is, it is defining the private address. The private addresses are So these are the range of private address. This is the range of private address. All the other addresses except these or public. So you no need to worry about public. If you know private, all the rest are public. For example, 172.32.1.1, what address it is? It is public or private? Hello, someone answer. Is it public or private? Public, because 172.31 is the last private. Right. So what we have seen today is the Lubeck address, APIPA address, private address and public address. I have to stop here because the next topic is very big called subnetting. We are going to learn subnetting for maybe two, three days. It will go minimum three days, minimum, minimum three days, three days. All right. So get ready to excuse your brain next three days. Any question on what we cover today? Fine then, see you.